Now, I want to talk to you for a little bit about identity and consistency. So identity is something we all kind of intuitively understand. I think when developers first think of identity, they might think of an auto increment primary key in a database. Now, this is definitely an implementation of identity, but at a more abstract level, a more philosophical level, I think identity is uh, combined of, from attributes of a single entity and all of these things that make up a person makes up their identity, but we actually live in a world of reduced scope. So when we create software, we don't take into consideration everything that's possible. We think about what's relevant to the application. So if we have a member for application, we don't have an entire uh, archive of everything that makes them them. Instead, we have values like name, birth, date of birth, maybe the city that they live in, something like that. And then if you look at two people who have the same name, the same date of birth, and the same city, you can see that the resolution of this data is not high enough to actually identify one from the other. So we have to then build this idea of identity into the system. We have to explicitly create this thing called an ID. Now, when you have an ID that's created in the database, that serves the purpose of ensuring that every database row is different. If you had two database rows that have the exact same data, how do you select one from the other? So instead, when we go and do a query, we want to select back a specific user ID or member ID or an invoice ID or something like that. And that is going to differentiate that entity from the collection of the rest of the entities in the system. Now, that kind of brings some interesting ramifications to our code when we have this object that requires consistency. And what, what is consistency? Consistency is ensuring that the object is always valid. So when we're designing software, we have business rules, rules like there cannot maybe be more than a certain number of line items per invoice, or uh, an invoice may must have a name, uh, tax ID, that kind of thing. Those business rules are called invariants. In an object in which all of the invariants are guarded, in which all of the data and all the state of the object is always valid within the constraints of those invariants, we have a consistent object. Now, in PHP, for example, we have some tools that we can use to ensure consistency in our objects. First and foremost, I think of the constructor. So the constructor is a method that is called to, to instantiate a new instance of a class. You can add arguments to a constructor and ensure that these things must be passed in in order to have a valid instance of the object being created. So it's easy to see how we can require, for example, a company name, a tax ID into the constructor of the invoice to ensure that we have these. And if they're not passed in, well, that's a syntax error. The language, the, the idiom of the language rejects the idea that you can create just create an invoice without passing in the parameters to that constructor. Now, uh, you can guard invariants at every point in which you're communicating with this object. So if we think about this object as this cell, where we see the boundaries, but all of the, the data and the behavior are encapsulated in between, then we can actually send messages to that object. So we can say, I want you to perform this, and here are some data that goes along with it. At that point, at the point of the interface of the object, that's where we can make sure our invariants are guarded. You can see how not only are we forcing the, the system, we're forcing the developer to pass in the right data to the constructor and to the method, but also, for example, we can check rules. We can write rules like an if statement inside those methods that say, okay, if we're adding a line item to the invoice, then uh, do we have more than three line items already? And if so, we can throw an exception. And this exception means that this scope of code is no longer valid. It's going to kick back, and we're gonna be able to catch that exception at, at a further out scope of code, but this scope of code is just not going to happen.
it stops right there. We can do that in the constructor, we can do that in methods, and in this way, we can ensure that all of the business rules are always guarded. Now, what if we have this ID, uh, idea of identity and we require the identity to come from the database? So we have this object that necess necessarily needs an identity, a company name and a tax ID. What happens when we try to create that object but we don't have an identity? Well, I guess that means that we're not making that identity explicit, we're, we're hiding it inside the implementation, we're expecting that to come through from an ORM to, uh, from the database. What if we want the object to be fully consistent and all of the ideas within the object to be expressed openly through the constructor, through the methods? Well, then we have to have an ID going into it. We have to be able to inject the ID into the constructor as part of the necessary requirements for having this object. In doing so, we communicate directly to developers, to whoever is reading this code, that this is a necessary piece of the equation. So how do we actually go and hit the database and get that identity, get that unique number, and then bring it back and then put it into our object? That's uh, just incredibly complicated and, and adds so much complexity that's undesired what if we could create an implementation for identity that would allow us to generate it anytime we want to, on the server, in the client, whatever, and basically be guaranteed that it is unique? Well, we actually have this technology. It's called a UUID, a universally unique identifier. And we can generate these. Matter of fact, we can generate something like a hundred a second for a hundred years and have a chance of two colliding be 50-50. So that's insanely, insanely unique. So this is, this is a really interesting concept. We can generate the ID first before we instantiate the object. So we inject the ID for the invoice, we inject the name of the company, and we inject the tax ID for the company, and from the very moment our object is created, it's consistent.